Today we're gonna make the most awesome name plaque ever, or at least a pretty good one. Today I'm gonna be making a name plaque for a guy I've worked with for a long time and he got promoted so now he thinks he's all important and stuff and he needs a name plaque for his new desk. And he's one of those guys, he knows he's known me for a long time and he just gave me free reign to make whatever I want. So of course I like that. And I also had a request to do like a thought process video what I'm, what I'm thinking about uh, as I go through this whole thing. So I'll be doing that, it'll be a little bit of music, a little bit of me talking. So the first thing I did was Look at his personality. He's kind of fiery. <laughs> if you mess up, he's going to get on you. So it's one of those deals where the uh, first thing I thought of was try to make a volcano with his name coming out of it or something. Something to have to do with fire, volcano, lava rock, something. With liquid hot magma. So that's what we're going to do. And the other part of this is you get it. I got that idea in my head and I'm going to roll with it. Have the confidence to roll with it. Do it. If you fail, you fail. Big deal. He's my friend, and if I mess it up or it doesn't look like how I have it in my head, he doesn't know that. So he's gonna like it no matter what. Roll with your ideas, have the confidence, and, and roll with it. So now we're gonna look at what we have, and I'm gonna start talking about what I'm thinking as, I, as I'm doing this stuff. So first thing I did was stabilize these four pieces of wood. This one looks really cool. It almost looks like a river right there, so that'll be an awesome spot to have some lava flowing down and then I can kind of adjust these things where I want them. I stabilize this wood, I'll put a link up there to my wood stabilizing video. It's a pretty popular video, a lot of people have gotten a lot out of it. I'm gonna situate these in a mold to what that makes sense, like lava's flowing down it or it's uh, shaped a certain way. And I found one of these little Tupperware thingies. It is, it's slanted like this and it's the right size. Uh, when I was measuring his desk, I didn't have anything to measure with, so I measured my arm, and that's exactly about as big as I wanted. It's about as wide as I wanted it, and um, it was 80 cents for this. So, and it should slide right out. Everything, and now it, kind of, it has these little things down here. Now that'll give me like a, some reference points to start grinding, because I'm not going to use a lathe on this or anything. I'm just going to grind it. I'm going to cut it with whatever I have, bandsaw, table saw. Hand saw, I'm gonna sand it, use a grinder or whatever I have to do to get it uh, shaped like I want it. This is gonna be an abstract shape. It's not gonna be symmetrical probably too much. Um, so there's that. And these will fit in here. So yeah, it's plenty deep enough. So 80 cents for this. And the reason why I did that was because I could make a mold out of this stuff, this corrugated plastic stuff. And it works fine, but you see how flimsy it is. This stabilized wood is really heavy, so I know uh, I want to I want to show you how I pour it. So it would be real hard to pour it out of the pressure pot and then grab it and put it in the pressure pot. But with this, I can just grab it and put it down. There's my so there's your mold. And now. So now we pretty much have this full. I think it'd be pretty cool with all this. I need to make this look more natural and this in here. So I think I'm gonna go over to the sander. I'll turn on the dust collection. Stabilized wood is very, very dusty. So I'll turn on the dust collection and I'll hit this with the sander and try to make, make some divots and, and things like that and try to make it a little more natural looking. Mind you, all this stuff on the outside is going to get ground down, so we don't really have to worry about the outside. It's this in here. There you go, I shaped them. Don't drive yourself crazy on this part because it's going to be, it's going to turn out good anyway, but you can go, you can try to set this stuff up here uh, exactly where you want it, but you're going to drive yourself crazy. And now we can look at the underneath part of it, and this is going to be the top. So you can just imagine, let me, let me fix that back. You can kind of see through there. 
see how the cracks are and everything's kind of situated it's gonna it's gonna be cool so so i'm gonna go ahead and wipe these down with denatured alcohol get everything i'm gonna sand them first i'm probably gonna spare you that where there's like there's shiny spots on here for where the cactus juice is from stabilizing it i'm gonna knock all that off make sure everything i don't know if you can see it see there's light reflecting off of right there i'm gonna sand all that and just with a random orbit sander 220 grit and and then uh, take it in the house. I'm gonna heat this up to about 150 degrees for about 30 minutes. It just, it light, it's gonna get all the surface moisture out of it. And uh, resin likes to be warm anyway. So um, I put a, I got another piece of stabilized wood that I'm gonna lay on top of here. Normally I would hot glue these pieces down to the bottom, but since the bottom's really gonna be the top that we wanna see, I don't want to mess with that side of it so i'm gonna have this piece is big enough to hold all four pieces down and i'm gonna tape it and i'm gonna do that now this is gonna be a pretty big pour and i don't want to come short i don't want to have to pour twice i don't want witness lines or anything like that so i'm gonna make extra and i have pin blanks ready this is upside down so fire goes from red to yellow so I'm gonna have to pour yellow first and then red, and then as I come up, put more red, if that makes sense. So when I flip it up, when we get out of the mold, it's gonna be red and then yellow uh, flames at the top. So something to think about. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna dump these both in here and start mixing and hit the timer. This is gonna be red and this is gonna be yellow. And uh, I probably won't be doing a whole lot of talking, so let's get some music going. That was a 3,400 gram pour. That's a pretty big pour. Not all of it went in the project. I filled up a big pen blank and two smaller pen blanks. I just wanted to make sure I didn't uh, have to double pour it. I hate witness lines and stuff like that. The colors were Caster's Choice Blood Red and Caster's Choice Sunrise Yellow. I have tons and tons of colors, but these are the ones that worked first. <laughs> I did a few uh, experiments and I'll show you those right now. We're gonna... The first one I tried was some dyes and I put a little bit of mica powder in there. If you can tell, it's see-through. The one where I, the color that I put the mica powder in was red with some red dye and then I had orange dye. And I thought I put a lot in there, but it didn't, that's no way it's gonna work for what we were doing. Uh, this blank is, this blank is cool though. It'll probably be good for uh, tool handles or something like that. But as far as fire goes, it wasn't gonna work. Now I did this one and it, it looks okay. And it was just like pouring. I poured way more red in that than I did yellow. This was some more of that see-through stuff that looks cool, but it wasn't what I was looking for. And then finally, I had more yellow. It was the same as this one, but I had more yellow and it looks like fire to me. So that's what I tried on the the final project except for a lot bigger volume of it so we'll see what happens here we go we're gonna see what we got here awesome i got a feeling that's gonna be super cool when we start grinding into it it's gonna be awesome let me get these pin blanks out <laughs> this thing is ridiculous and I love it so first thing I'm these colors are I think are gonna be cool when we get into it we start cutting into it and grinding it's gonna be awesome I think the first thing we need to do is get this piece off of there and I'll probably go to the bandsaw and do it that's probably the safest way and then sand I want this flat I'm gonna get that totally flat first and that way 
whenever I go to cut it with other things, we'll have a flat surface to reference off of. And uh, we're gonna start doing that right now. So what I did, this was kind of rocky. So I just uh, hot glued some of these boards down and kind of made a sled, it kept it flat and therefore safer. Um, this is one of those safety things. Do things at your own risk and do things in your own shop how you want to do it. Take really, really light passes if you're going to do this. And now this side's flat, so now I can take these off and I can plane the top side and we can start off pretty flat. So safety first, you're in charge of your own safety. Look how cool it looks. Now I can start chopping off the edges like this to make it kind of look like a mountain or just, I just want to kind of have a slanted shape. So table saw, band saw, hand saw, however you got to do it. This is the piece that was holding everything down in the mold. I think this is about an appropriate size piece of wood for the letters. His name is Smith. Um, so this is probably appropriate to cut the letters out of this. So that's probably what I'm going to do. But part of the thought process is I'm going to grind this down. I'm going to grind this whole thing down with the, with the flat disc on a grinder and just get the shape I want and then sand it and buff it and all that stuff and that this part will be done so I need to grind it first before I see how much room I'm actually going to have for the letters so that's what I, this is the part that uh, I've most been looking forward to and most been dreading because one it's super fun and it, you get to shape this it's coming right off of your hand on this I haven't seen a seam machine but there's nothing like getting something off of your hand. And then um, the bad thing about it is it's gonna tear up the whole shop. It's gonna throw, throw uh, shavings everywhere. But this is gonna be super fun and this is coming along nicely. You kind of get a, an idea of what's going on in there. And I think it's gonna be really cool shaped up and shined up. So I'm gonna stop talking. So I pretty much got all the rough stuff off of it, all the sharp edges from cutting it with the saws. Um, I'm gonna put some ridges in here, some valleys, and kind of make it have some kind of character. I don't, I don't want it just flat. So I'm gonna go ahead and continue on with the grinder. I'm gonna turn off the camera because I'm about to ruin my camera. This stuff's getting everywhere. So I'm gonna get the camera out of the way and when I come back, this will be shaped kind of how I want it. Here we go, I got it nice and messed up now. A bunch of ridges in there. I gotta sand all those out. I did a sanding video on how to sand uh, resin and that was on a lathe. All the same principles apply. I'll put that the link to that video up there. All the same principles apply to this. You just gotta put some elbow grease into it and some time and then you, you'll reap the rewards of good sanding. And this is I think will look pretty pretty cool when I finished but I'll do a little bit of time lapse of that. This is a downdraft table and it works real well. And you notice these hoses go into the table. So we'll see how good it works for this. Resin and the stabilized wood make its incredible amount of dust. So uh, keep that in mind when you do it. I'm gonna shut up and start sanding. Now I have this sanded 
with the random overdose sanders to 400 grit. Now I'm gonna start wet sanding. To, I'm gonna go all the way to a thousand. Before I do, I'm gonna put some denatured alcohol on this so you can kind of see how cool it's gonna be. <laughs> I love this part of it, it's so cool. So I'm gonna sand this up, I'm gonna wet sand this to up to a thousand. While I'm doing that, I still really don't know how I'm gonna do the leathers, if they're gonna be solid uh, stabilized wood or if they're gonna be hybrid with some more uh, resin in them or whatever. But I, I'm kind of thinking in my head right now that this is chaotic enough. And so I, the name might be nicer if it's just solid wood. So I don't know if having chaos down here and chaos in the letters would be too much. But the, the good thing is this is almost done and the letters, if, if I don't like them, I can redo them. So this was the big deal. The letters are, are no big deal. So let me get them sanded up. Next time you see me, we're gonna be doing some polishing. So I have this to a thousand grit so far. Got my logo stamped on it. This thing is really cool. It's way cooler than I thought it'd be. But we still have some more to go. I'm gonna do some Yorkshire grit. Um, that's abrasive paste. You usually use it when you're on the lathe, but you don't have to. We got, you can uh, get these little buffing wheels in town or online. And I think I'm gonna try this one and see how it works. But you just put this stuff on there, rub it all over it, and then buff it out. And then we'll go to the buffing wheels and we'll do a time lapse of that. And then we're gonna be amazed at the end of it. Here we go. So now that I'm finished with this part, I left the very top of it flat so I could fit a name on there. And whether it's individual letters or a whole name that's connected together, it doesn't matter because I left it flat. Uh, if you notice through all the sanding and all that stuff, I left this part right here perfectly flat. This was the part I cut off the bottom of that, uh, the original thing we did. You can see the resins on there still. I can plane this and I can get the measurement off of here and this is more than tall enough and if not if this isn't going to work i have a, a piece over here I, I might want to make it a little fatter than this but either way i get the measurement off of here go to the house do some programming on the uh for the cnc and i'll come out here in the morning and we'll cut some letters and I'll pretty them up with some sanding or whatever I got to do. I'm still not quite sure if I want to have hybrid ones or just the letters, but I can cut out the letters and then cut them up and then I, I can make a silicone mold and do, there's lots of options I can do, but I need to get the letters designed first and I'll see you in the morning. <laughs> it's the morning. I think I have a plan. Kind of thought about it last night. This piece, I've already planed it down a little bit. This, I'm gonna make this a base to go on top of that. And it'll be round and I'll shape it. And then I'll uh, cut out letters. I want the letters to be fatter. I think it, that, that whole thing's fat. I think the letters need to be fat too. Fat. And uh, then I'll glue them to here and I'll glue this to that. And then here we go. I'll show you what we're looking at. This 
this is too short to go through the planer. I want to get this down to about like right at an inch because the cutter I have for the CNC. So the cutter I have for the CNC is just over an inch. So I want to get this wood to about an inch thick. It's about an inch and a quarter right now. So I'm going to get it in there. I'm going to plane it. You have to do that safely by taping this to a longer board. So that way it's not going to try to flip out of there and try to kill someone. We want to do this safely. So go ahead and put some tape on here. So now I'll safely be able to put this through the planer. This is a pretty piece of wood to use for this. This is stabilized, the other piece is stabilized. I'll go through the, the whole sanding and all that process so it matches the wood in the base. Um, I have a CNC machine so I'm going to use it but you don't need this. I have a playlist of instructional videos on how to use this and the programming. I'll put a link up there but you don't need this. You can print off some letters, tape it to here, get on a scroll saw, coping saw, a hand saw, jigsaw, however you got to do it. Um, whatever you have at your disposal, you can do this. I'm not going to bore you with the, those details on this one. You're just going to play some music and cut the stuff out. And then next time you see me, we're going to be doing some, some uh, finishing. If you notice, I think the thing throughout the whole video is don't be afraid to change your plan. You're going to mess up a lot or what, it, what is up here doesn't translate down here. And this particular project doesn't have to do anything except for look pretty and don't misspell his name. I went to college so I can spell Smith nine times out of ten. Money for college. Your mom goes to college. Um, I said we're going to buff these and do all that kind of stuff, but this wood is... Fantastic. I don't think I need to do anything in this bottom piece. I just need to round over the edges. It doesn't need to take attention away from anything else. I think it needs to be plain. This wood is, is great. So I'm going to get the machine marks off. I'm going to do a round over here. I'm going to make sure that I have a spot to glue things. That's another thing you need to think about is under here. I'll probably put a little piece of tape and I'll sand and get that ready to uh, put some lacquer on. And then when I get ready to glue it, Take the tape off, glue it, and we'll be in business. So, here we go. I just have the first coat on the letters. I still need to do the base and glue them down and all of that stuff. And one lesson is don't get in a hurry. I have to work tomorrow. I'm just gonna have to do it. I'm not gonna get finished today like I wanted to is the point, but don't get in a hurry. This is something this guy's gonna have forever. So take your time, do it right. And I'll see you after work. So here's our letters. I put the little, uh, I spray the lacquer on there and then I get some 320 or 400 or whatever and all you do is just knock off the little dirt nibs 
just barely go over it. And then I'm gonna take this tape off and that'll give us a fresh piece of wood to glue to that. And then I'll figure out how I'm gonna get in between these letters on here after that. But even if I have to brush on some brushable lacquer or whatever I have to do to get it in there. But the glue is not gonna stick to lacquer. So and speaking of the glue, Starbond sent me a, bu a bunch of their products. And the one I'm gonna use today is the brown medium because this is brown. Um, I have accelerator here, but I don't think I'm gonna use that. I'm just gonna put some of this on there and kind of set it. I'm gonna put these on there where I want them and get them centered and, and then put them on there one by one. And I'm just gonna be real patient and set them on there where I want them. So Starbond also gave me a coupon code for this stuff. Uh, Jake10 at checkout and I'll have a link below. So here we go, we're gonna glue this on there. So I have the lacquer on here, man. The, the, the uh, trick to lacquer is get it shiny. If you put too much, it's gonna look kind of plastic. Uh, doesn't have a good finish to it. So get it where it's shiny and then quit. <laughs> Be patient and don't mess with it too soon or whatever. This turned out pretty good and I hope I'm in focus. I put a piece of tape down here so that I can pull this off. And it's gonna be wood that will super glue will stick to. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna set this on here where I like it. Let me get some painter's tape and I'm gonna kinda outline it. I'm gonna put it on the outline of it so that I can go right back to it once I get the glue on. I don't wanna be messing around too much with this. So I'm gonna outline it with this, sand in the middle, put some glue on it and we'll be ready to make my boss happy. I'm gonna use the same brown medium Starbond uh, super glue. I'm not gonna use the accelerator because I wanna have at least a couple seconds to adjust this thing if I don't stick it just right. So, uh, wish me luck. Stay tuned till the end. I'm gonna get a reaction from him. We're gonna unveil it. He'll see it for the first time. Uh, get his reaction. That ought to be pretty cool. This was a thought process video. It was instructional with thought process, kind of some music, some hybrid video. We'll see how that goes. Tell me if you like it in the in the comments below. It just kind of went over what I'm going through in my head. I started off with a rough idea, and then you end up with this at the end of it, and just kind of get there. Use what you have. It doesn't have to be something fancy. I have a CNC machine, but this is a coping saw or a scroll saw or anything like that. I use the 80 cent mold for the volcano part of it. It's all good. Any questions, put them in the comments below. And the next thing you're gonna see is uh, unveiling. Congratulations on your promotion. Thank you, sir. You're still not that cool. Are you ready for this? I'm ready. Oh man, that's freaking awesome, dude. You like it? Yes, I love it. Can I have next week off? No. You didn't even, you didn't even think about it. <laughs>